Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matthew Dakins. Um, and uh, we do stuff around here. We do beer stuff around here. We do a lot of stuff around here, mostly beer-focused stuff. And a lot of that comes in the old review format. Mostly pre-recorded. Every now and then we like to sneak in a, uh, uh, a live one. That's what we have going on here. We have a live one. What is it, Nicholson? Is it Joker? You got a live one here? Yeah. How about that? Uh, beer I have actually been chomping at the bit to review for quite some time, and that'd be Rochefort Triple Extra. Um, I am a huge fan of Belgian beer, Trappist beer, the whole nine. It's one of my favorite styles. It's pretty much the style that got me into craft beer. And, um, yeah, it's not that often you see a Trappist brewery and a, a brewery with so such a, I guess to say, small portfolio of beers come out with a new beer. You know, uh, Tra- Rochefort's pretty much been, you know, the six to eight, ten, done, donezo. Nothing else really coming out of there. Not really expecting much, but it's not going to uh, bang out this triple extra. Uh, I believe it came out about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, I'm actually in a, a, on a bunch of um, like uh, mailing lists for um, a lot of di- distributors. Distributors? That's how you say that word. Uh, Merchant of Vin actually imports this in the United States. And, this, and I got the newsletter when it originally kind of hit, hit, the, hit the news cycle. And I was like, I rarely ask for samples. And all, all, the, all the, um, the distro kind of um, industry things are like, hey, reach out if you want any samples. And I was like, dude, you got to send this off. And they're like, actually, they're like, this is just announcing the beer. I'm like, they're like, we're not even sure when this is going to come out in the United States. It's going to be in Europe and stuff like that. But they're like, we'll let you know. I was walking through a local mom pop spot. Uh, and there it is. Sitting on the shelf. I mean, granted, a year and a half later or so. Um, and uh, yeah. Now we're going to review it. So uh, Rochefort is probably my favorite Trappist brewery um, as far as just their base core lineup. Like if you're talking like a dark slash quad, which is typically my favorite when it comes to like a uh, Trappist breweries, I think Rochefort 10 is kind of takes the cake out of all of the quads. Um, is, quad, is 10 a dark? It doesn't, it's six to one half dozen. Um, it's, it's, it's close. It's between that and maybe St. Bernardus, I think, make the best versions. Um, so I've really dug their portfolio for quite a bit. Uh, La Trap is probably my favorite overall Traps Brewery just because their barrel aging program is bonkers. And while their, their quad, which is where I hold pretty much all Traps Breweries up as far as where uh, what makes them a favorite for me, um, their quad is super delicious, super banana so a little bit more banana than what you typically expect. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I'm super excited to dive into this sucker. So let's do it. I actually got proper glassware. Got my little Rochefort glass. As you can see, there's a crack in it. See that crack? Yeah. Not good, but I've had this probably for about, I want to say, maybe going on 10 years. And it's cracked. Um, so I will uh, still drink out of it because it still holds. holds. I'm using you know, um, wire cutter still comes here because I still I, I brought a bottle opener out here, but um, I don't know where it is. So we work with what we've got. So great cap. Caps on trap spears typically be pretty awesome as far as this beer goes. Um, lot 310, uh, it's, uh, that's gotta be a best by date cause it's 2023. They're giving this a year maybe. A lot of sediment floating around we have on this. 8.1% alcohol by volume. So classic Rochefort labelings. We got a little, little people up in the chat. We got Remy, Beer Geek Collins saying, what's up dude, what's going on? He says, this is not my favorite. Well, I'm sorry you don't like it. It doesn't mean I am not going to like it. Floaties, because I pour like an awesome person. And uh, 
we only have uh, Adam from Mercy Beers chiming in to saying, uh, good evening, Matt. Have you had the extra yet? No, this is my first time having it, actually. Um, so I figured I'd give it the old once over. As you can see, floaties, all the floaties are belong to us. Um, that's the one thing that I've always found kind of funny about the whole craft beer movement here in the United States. You know, a lot of people, they, uh, uh, they, uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, you know, people pour beer, newbies, I guess they're saying new beer drinkers pour beer and they see floaties and they're like, oh, this beer's going to be horrible. I actually am conditioned to think the opposite. I'm like, oh, fuck, sediment, particulate. This is probably going to be pretty good. Oh, Adam's saying, I carry one of my keys, so I never have a problem. Well, I, I, I carry one key, two keys technically. It's my car and my work key. I don't like bulk. And honestly, I have like 4,700 bottle openers, um, usually with an arm's length of me, especially in the studio. But since I'm out here and I'm doing them at the, uh, as you can see, I'm at the, uh, the drywall slash spackling slash soon to be sanding. So I'm, I've kind of emptied this area out so it can get just like douched with sand. So I just don't know what bottle openers are. So there you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, what's all the part of the Belgian triple, just a little bit more murky. And I, I'm not really even talking about the kind of chunky floaty portion of the show here. I'm actually talking about just, you know, triples tend to be a little bit clear. This comes off more like New England style hazy IPA um, than a Belgian triple. Not that they can't be hazy because they usually are, but this has an extra density to it that I typically don't see. So it looks the part to a certain extent, but I poured the whole thing in there, so I'm not going to be able to get the proper nose. But um, definitely... Uh, Definitely a little bit more murky. Let's see what she smells like. They, them, he, anywhere in between. Doesn't have to be pigeonholed into a she. Like. Mm. It's like a sweet. It's sweet. I mean, it's spelled and triple. You're going to expect it to be sweet. But it has this kind of like. It's not a butterscotch. There's no butterscotch. It's not a butterscotch sweetness or a caramel sweetness, but it's in that ballpark. It's like a, it's like a hard candied, but softer than that. It's not like sh sugary. Um, it, there's something more. Maybe like if you made like a candy out of like a, mm, a non back black strap molasses kind of thing and kind of dropped out the molasses portion of the show a little bit. There's a sweetness to it, but it's not inherently like. It's not overly sweet. It's at least the nose isn't perceptionally sweet before people flip out and go, you can't get sweet on the nose. Perceptionally sweet. It's not over the top, but there is this kind of soft, kind of washed out kind of caramel kind of sweetness to it. I'm getting a soft graininess to it. Nothing too crazy. But it really is that sweetness that honestly does not remind me of a Belgian triple. Um, it reminds me of like a blonde barley wine on the nose more than anything else. It's 8%. It's not super high in ABV, but if I were going to associate the nose with any, anything specific, it would be more of like a blonde barley wine kind of vibe to the way the beer kind of comes off as opposed to just what you'd expect from a Belgian triple, which would be maybe a little bit of bubble gum, a little bit of banana, sweeter malt, a little bit more sharper sweetness to it. It comes off a little bit softer. It comes off a little bit more kind of, I don't know, cool. Lack of a better descriptor. Let's get that in. Cheers, y'all. I like that. I like that quite a bit, actually. That's really good. I mean, you're wrong. Um, it's, it's really, really unique. I think this is probably one of the more kind of unique beers that I've had in quite some time. It has a Belgian triple kind of ethos to it. Like a, 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 a not ethos would be a bad word. It's a, a kind of, a, a, I don't want to say DNA because inherently I don't think it comes off as a true Belgian kind of triple. Um, it is somewhere between the triple and kind of that blonde barley one I was talking about. But it has this Belgian yeast kind of core to it, something that is not super 
kind of showy. It's not super banana. It's not super bubblegum. None of that stuff coming on. There's a little, there's a decent actually pepperiness to it, but it has, this is kind of softer, kind of like Belgian singly kind of yeastiness to it as opposed to a triple. It's bitter. It's actually decently bitter. I did not expect it to be this bitter. I think that combination of that little bit of pepperiness from that um, yeastiness in combination with the hot profile on here brings this decent level of bitterness to it. The mouth feels absolutely fantastic. You know, triples tend to be, even if they're unfiltered like this one, tend to have a little bit of a flabby kind of greasy kind of mouthfeel to them. At least for me, they have this little bit of slickness to them. That's not the case here. This comes off kind of soft, kind of comes off soft, like almost like a pale ale, a, a, a hazy pale ale kind of mouthfeel, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. You know, a Trappist brewery that's making a triple and it comes off as like a hazy pale ale kind of mouthfeel. It's very, very weird, but it works. And really comes down to the way this beer kind of shows itself in the mall. And it is what I said previously. It comes off very much for me a combination of like a Belgian triple in combination with um, like a, a, bel a blonde barley wine. Like this has more in common with like Stilly Nacht than it does like a traditional triple, you know? Um, and I dig it. I really do dig it. I think it's quite fantastic. And I think it's really, really, really unique in a sense. The way it kind of shows that sweetness, shows that maltiness, it comes off. I keep wanting to say the word caramel, but it's not that. It's something akin to that. It's something with caramel DNA. I just don't have the vocabulary to kind of talk through and kind of explain, but it's that. But it's under sweetened, so it's not overly sweet. And then when you add that pepperiness of the yeast profile, when you add that bittering of the hops, I think it comes off as, by far and away, one of the more interesting beers that I've had in quite some time. It's really, really tasty. And it really is Belgian. It tastes like a Belgian beer. It tastes like a Travis beer. Even though it's so outside of what you'd typically hang your hat on, when it comes to the tastes and the flavors and the phenolics of a Belgian beer, like you really have this kind of like check the marks when it comes to Belgian stuff, you know, whether it be blondes or darks or anything in between, there's really this inherent soul to it. But I don't think it's that simple. I don't think you just say, oh, it has these things, therefore it is a Belgian beer. It's kind of like one of those things where you taste it and when you taste it, you know it, it really does come off to me like a Belgian born trap is born kind of beer. But on the flip side of things, it's not a triple for me. I can see why they call it triple extra, triple extra. Maybe the extras is the, the weird part of the show here. The thing that they're leaning into to kind of explain away how it's not classically like a Belgian triple. But I think it's really, really unique. I think it's really, really interesting. And honestly, for a brewery to like brew specific exact beers with pinpoint precision for decades, uh, centuries, um, and just really just lean heavily into what they do, they do, and they do it right to come out with a new beer. Your knee-jerk reaction is, it's going to be BJCP, pre-BJCP, classic, what we'd expect, Belgian triple. Um, and it's just not that. And it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's not negative. It, it's its own unique presence. It's almost like a like a happy session bar, blonde barley wine is like that's where I would compartmentalize this beer if I really had to shut it into some kind of like like style. It's a hoppy. It's not an American. It's a hoppy session because I'm saying session because it's like eight percent as opposed to fourteen. It's a hoppy session blonde barley wine, and I think. Adam says this is uh, just this extra, not triple. That, that's unique because over here it says triple extra. Um, but yeah, I uh, I think this is great. I really, really do. I really do. And I'm infinitely curious, infinitely curious to see how this ages. With the ABB being 80%, I don't think it's like a 20, 30, 40 year 
major. I think this has some legs to it, though. I think this could age into something beautiful. The malt base, the way it shows, with that spicy pepperiness and the hoppiness, I think this could age into something really cool. Time will tell on that. But I think, you know, coming out of the gate, what did I expect? I expected something different. I really honestly did. I expected something to what you would expect. You know, if they said, here's a beer, there's no label on it, it's a Trappist triple. Drink it. That is not what I would expect. I think that's, again, a beautiful thing. I think it's a delicious, cool beer. I think it stands on its own legs as a unique experience. And it's probably one of the, like I said, one of the more unique, one of the more fun beers that I've had in quite some time because, you know, I don't dive into these kind of beers all that often anymore. You know, with my limited beer consumption now, limited, more limited reviews, I kind of, you know, stuff that, like this on the shelf, I'm like, yeah, I'll get something in session. I'll get something in session. But like I said, at the, at the get of this video, I've been chomping at the bit to review this, and I'm really glad I did that. I think this is a really, really fun beer. I think it's absolutely beautifully made. I think it is infinitely unique. And I think it's a really fun take on a style that really doesn't get a ton of fun takes. More specifically, from uber traditional breweries like this. So yeah, I'm a fan. Man. This is it one of the better Belgian triples I've had as a lady? If we go by the letter of the law, what a triple is, I don't think this is. But I'm going to say yes, even regardless. One of the more fun beers I've had as a lady. Yes. Is it the best roasted beer? No. I mean, 10, 10 and 8 trump this, I believe. It's, it, it, you have a four beer portfolio. It's, it, you know, even if this came in last, it would still be better than most people's first. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to do a side by side between this and six to see where it lands for me. But it's very, 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 very tasty. I'm glad I got to drink it. Um, Mount Rushmore triples eking towards that, maybe on there. Oh, man, there's some really, really great triples. Actually, this might be on there, man. It's uniqueness might put it on there. I'm going to have to do it. Maybe we'll do a triple side by side by side. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to drink session beers and review those now. Let's do a nine-way triple. Let's do it. Um, and there you go. Let's talk about it. Have you had this beer? We know Rami has. He's not a big fan of it. it sucks to be you, dude. Uh, who else has had this? What do you think of this beer? Um, what do you think of uh, Rochefort um, in general? Uh, this is like a thing I do. It's like a tick. I itch my ear with my earring. I'm sorry. Um, what do you think of Rochefort? Where do they land for you on the whole map? That huge map of Trappist breweries. One last now, because Spencer's going away in the United States. Um, where do they rank for you as far as Trappist breweries? Are they your favorite? Are they towards the bottom, towards the top? What do you think of their beers? What do you think? What is your favorite beer from them? Where does this beer, beer land for you as far as? Your deliciousness scale. Let's talk about that. So there you go. Not going to hang out. Thanks for everybody for stopping by. Remy's like, ha, ah, good to hear. My friend, cheers. Enjoy it big time. Um, yeah, good seeing you, brother. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little review. Like I said, down there, comment, all that fun stuff. And let me know your thoughts on this sucker. Hopefully you're having a great day. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers, y'all.